everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. In this week's vlog, we're just gonna spend a few days together. We have a friend coming over for the weekend. But yeah, just hang out a few days in our life. Quick puppy update. It's been almost exactly two weeks now since we brought Blue home. Tomorrow will be exactly two weeks. Today's Friday. She's doing so good. Her and Aiko, I'm just so happy because they play all the time. Aiko and her love each other. Like, it's kind of crazy. And Hero's warmed up to her. She plays here and there. She's more like a referee. When they start roughhousing and going crazy, Hero will run in and then literally like pin her to the ground. It's almost like, calm down. So she's our little referee right here. Here's little Miss Hero, the referee. Bestie little sister, big sister. Anyways, yeah, puppy training and stuff has been going well. As you can see back here, we put our carpet out because she has been doing so good. So that's the blue update. She has been an amazing addition to our family. She's just, I don't know, she fits in really well. And I am really happy that these girls just took her in the pack. Pretty much the next day. It's 11 11. Make a wish. Before we get into our day today and the vlog, I do want to share a new lens that I got and it is this Sigma 10 to 18 f 2.8 lens. This lens is made for crop APS-C cameras, but I'm filming with a Sony ZV-E1 and with this camera, it has something called dynamic stabilization where it crops into your image to give you really smooth footage, which is one of the things I love about this camera. And I'm shooting with an 11 millimeter f1.8, which is also made for crop cameras. You can get away with using APS-C lenses for this camera. There are other line of cameras can do this as well. I know I could do it with my a7C2, but you will see a little bit vignetting because that one doesn't have dynamic stabilization. So what dynamic stab is, it crops into your footage so that it can adjust for movements like this, but it does need to crop in to compensate for that. Let me show you guys this 11 millimeter when I turn off dynamic civilization so you get an idea of the vignette that will appear in this image so let me do that real quick okay so this is with stabilization totally turned off and you see those black edges around there that's basically capturing some of the hole behind the lens because this is made for a smaller sensor camera so right now the sensor of this camera is this whole picture here where you <laughs> look how crazy this is <laughs> So where you're seeing the black, that's the whole sensor, right? But for a crop camera, the sensor is only like right here, so you don't see those black vignetting areas around there. So that's kind of like a non-scientific way of explaining how crop lenses can work with full-frame cameras. I know a lot of you guys are not techie, not into camera gears, but I know a lot of you guys are also creators and might be stumbling on this video because I am going to put this in the title because I was trying to search for how this lens works with full-frame cameras. So this vlog is basically going to be filmed all on this guy but let's unbox it real quick and let me turn back stabilization so we can get rid of these things right here okay so like i said i am shooting on an 11 millimeter f 1.8 crop lens and this is a 10 to 18 f 2.8 crop lens but let me show you guys what aperture sort of does in case you are interested or very new to photography so as you can see in the background there's a little bit of blur right because i'm shooting at f 1.8 we're gonna go to f 8 See how everything is more in focus? Let's even go to F12. So now all of this is pretty much in focus. Now we're gonna go back to F1.8. See, now it's blurry. I just wanna show you what happens when you play around with the F-stop. Anyways, let's unbox this because I wanna throw this guy on here so I can show you guys the difference. So it comes with a lens hood and then the lens itself. And that's pretty much it, so. Let's see, oh wow, she's tiny too. Very, very small, which I like. So here it is. This is the Sigma 10 to 18. And the thing about this lens though is that in the wide 10 millimeter lens, it actually extends. So it's kind of backwards, but I think that's fine because this is actually, it's very, very strong. So if it's here and I'm holding it like this, it's not gonna move on me. Wow, it's very sturdy. But yeah, look how small this lens is. Okay, so this lens hood is a little bit weird to put on because usually you line it up and you twist and that's when it locks in place. But this one, you line it up between these two little lines and you just push down. Now it's on, but then you slide it just ever so slightly to take out. It's kind of weird, whatever. So that's how the lens looks. And we're gonna pop this guy on here right now. So let's go. All right, whoa, I'm zoomed in right now. So let me zoom out. 
there we go. So this is 10 millimeter f 2.8. So you're not going to get as much blurry in the background as a 1.8 lens, but I think it's still pretty good. But if you do zoom in more, you will get a little bit more blur because that's just how it works with lenses with farther focal lengths. You're going to get more separation. So you can see the blur over there, but obviously this is like so close. Also, the craziest thing is this can focus so quick. Like I'm going to just do this. Okay. And I'm going to touch the lens hood. That's not even as close as it can get. So now I'm just going to do this and touch the lens hood. <laughs> now I'm going to get go and just even get closer. Oh my God. Like that's crazy. So the, the other thing about wide angle lens is it does distort your features. So like my nose looks huge right here. Um, because I do have a big nose in general, but I feel like when I do use these wide ultra wide lenses, it does elongate my nose more than it should be. So if I go to 28, you can kind of see my nose almost looks a little bit more balanced with my face. But then when I go to wide and I get close, my nose is like Pinocchio. <laughs> but then, whoa, isn't that trippy? I don't know. Does that make sense, guys? So that's the thing. Wide lenses are great for vlogging, but it does kind of elongate and stretch certain features in your face out. So another little thing to know about wide lenses. Oh, duh. I totally forgot to mention why do I use APS-C crop lenses on full frame cameras? That's because I want to go as light as possible. If I'm carrying this with one hand, I want a light lens to go along with my light camera so that it's easy to vlog. You know, obviously there are full frame cameras with similar focal lengths. Like Sony has like a 12 to 24 millimeter. That thing is huge. They also have a 14 millimeter 1.8, but that thing is quadruple the size, weight, and price. I feel like that lens is like $1,600. This guy was 500 new. You can probably find it 3, 350 used. This Sigma was 600 new. These lenses are much more affordable, smaller, and if you can make them work on your workflow, they're great for vlogging, especially because they're so small. All right, but let's go do a little bit of housework before we get our workday started. Let's get Little Miss Blue in her crate. Go in your crate. Go in your crate. Good girl, good baby, thank you. Who's a good girl? Okay, take a nap. All right, see that thing? That guy over there. We gotta change that filter out. It's been quite a while. Okay, so I'm filming on my Pocket 3 right now, but the thing about this air filter is, you're, I was supposed to change it back in January, it's already October, but here we are, here's homeowner things that we forget about and just kind of put off. I had ordered six of these filters and for some reason I couldn't find where the rest were and I just couldn't get myself to ordering more. Um, but with that said, I should have just took the loss and ordered more more recently and not waited 10 months to do this because this filter is disgusting. I'll go this way, shoot. <laughs> and air filters help basically trap dust, dust mites, pet dander, um, among other things. Keep your air in your HVAC system nice and clean. I actually already vacuumed that. That's why that's pretty clean, but this is so gross. Kind of embarrassed to show you guys, but here we go. Ugh. Oh my God. I'm so freaking embarrassed. You wanna see how disgusting this is? Oh my God. Look at that. Wow. Let me show you a new one. Okay, so here's a comparison of a new one. <laughs> All because I didn't want to order again because I knew I ordered a six pack. I'm thinking what happened is when we had a bunch of cardboard around, maybe these guys were like laying next to it or on top of it and we just accidentally tossed them along with the cardboard or recycled them along with the other cardboard. All right, let's get this guy up. How do you know which side goes where? Is it double-sided? Airflow. Oh, so the airflow should be going down that way. Okay, much better. Oh shit. Oh yeah, my arms are tired. <laughs> okay, here we go. Make sure it's in there. So you don't want these guys falling on any pets. All right, whoa, why was that like a freaking workout? I'm over here sweating. All right, change out your air filters. 
Also, we have neglected this space over here for quite some time and unfortunately this euphorbia got so big where it just ended up falling. It broke apart because we didn't put a stick to hold it up where it should be and like this guy is also about to fall on us so that's so unfortunate because it was growing so nicely and we kind of just neglected this area. The one in the backs are starting to do the same thing so we got to fix those. Hey Aiko come here watch out those are spiky. <laughs> Inside, come on, go inside. Let's go in, in. All right, let me show you what I'm talking about over here with the backyard euphorbia. So this one is growing pretty nicely. It is leaning towards the right a bit. So that's uh, kind of something we have to keep an eye on. But this guy, we pretty much fucked up. It is leaning towards the right like crazy. We have to cut a lot of these guys. I'm thinking to cut three of these here, here and here. And the cool thing about cutting euphorbias is you can actually propagate them so you let them dry out for a few weeks. Don't want to plant them right away because they will rot. But if you let it dry out completely, plant them, they will grow again. So that's the great thing about euphorbias. But yeah, we're scared this is just going to fall and topple over us because we like sit here with the dogs often. So definitely want to take care of that today. Another thing I want to take care of if I have time is this over here. So this is our olive tree, which... Oddly enough, it's supposed to be a fruitless olive tree, but it does bear fruit. We had one in the front yard that also is fruitless and it bore fruit. Is that correct word? Bore? Bared? It bared fruit two seasons in a row, but this season it didn't. So we're hoping next season this doesn't bear any fruit because it's supposed to be fruitless. And we don't want all of this crazy nonsense going on. And we also have some sort of rodent coming and eating all these. We're thinking a raccoon, possibly, maybe squirrels. I don't know if squirrels eat them, but that could be that. But this guy is in desperate need of some help, so we need to grab a stick so we can prop this guy up so that it's not blocking <laughs> straight up our grill area. And she just needs a little... A little guidance and assistance. Dusty, I don't know if I'm gonna get into a lot of this today, but we'll see. A lot of raking that needs to be done. Um, but yeah, like this guy, I feel like it's growing really nicely. All right, let's get to cutting this euphorbia. I'm sorry, my friend, but you need a haircut and we'll propagate your farm, so. They're not going to waste. <laughs> or I could sell them on OfferUp. The euphorbias I got for our front yard, I actually bought those on OfferUp. Crazy steal, so maybe this can go to a, another awesome home. So you see how this moves? I'm so terrified this whole thing is just gonna fall. All right, take two. Again, my friend euphorbia, I'm sorry, but you gotta go. We gotta help you out here before you fall on your own. Kind of hard because I can't get all the way through. So, this way, there. It's not the cleanest cut, but you know what? I'll go in later and clean that up. But yeah, I'm thinking this one, huh? Yeah. How are we gonna do this? This way. Yeah, much better. So once I have a handle on this. Oh, again, letting it drop. <laughs> oh shit. That one was so heavy. Oh, I broke the other one. No. Fail guy. Oh wait, that's a clean cut. We can propagate both those. Okay, so I think that looks good. It's still leaning to the right, but not as crazy as it was before. And then I'm just gonna let those cuttings dry out in the side yard completely. This right here, you want that to be completely dry before you replant them. Otherwise, they will rot if you plant them and they're not completely dry. Oh, and before I let you guys go and see you tomorrow, I did want to mention that I have a pretty big brand deal. Well, not brand deal. Brand collaboration slash sponsorship coming up in November. It's the biggest brand I'll be working with. The deal itself isn't crazy. I'm not getting paid any money. It's just literally trade for product, but they are the biggest brand I will have worked with once that goes live. So that's exciting. It's exciting that they kind of just noticed my channel and reached out to me versus me reaching out to them and like giving this, this pitch. So it's really nice that they reached out to me and it is again trade for product. So not getting paid to say or do anything. It's just kind of one of those collaborations where I kind of have full control and just to give you a little bit of spoiler it is something I already own they've just sent me another one so I have 
full confidence that I can recommend this product to you guys. Again, it's not like this major thing. It's just a big brand, the biggest brand I'll be working with, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I just, it was a good bump in my enthusiasm or bump in my, uh, how do you, how do you say this? Like to keep it going, there's a word for it, but I can't find that word right now, but like re-energized me to keep this YouTube thing going because to be honest with you, I'm like, it's been a little bit rough, just, oh my God, I still have this. <laughs> Um, oh shoot, now I have hat hair. Let me get something to eat and we'll sit down and eat lunch together and I'll kind of explain to you a little bit more about what I was just gonna get into. Because if I'm being honest, I've been lying to you guys just a little bit. Just a teensy bit. Inadvertently, not on purpose. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, so I have like literally the most random lunch right here. <laughs> we had sausage, rice, and cucumbers last night for dinner. If you guys don't know or watch mukbangs or Kim Thai, she is famous for this little creation of sausage, rice, and cucumbers. It's so good. You get like the saltiness from the Cajun sausage with some rice. And then <laughs> the freshness of the cucumber. Mm. It all pairs so well in your mouth. I promise you guys, one of my favorite combos ever. And then I just had some nuggets because I was craving chicken nuggets. And I just had some ranch and a two times spice here. I know it looks weird, but I promise it's it's hitting the spot for me right now. Anyways, I wanted to talk to you guys real quick about how I was saying I lied to you. I've been lying to you inadvertently because I feel like I portray myself on my videos very confident about, you know, my life, my situation, everything that's going on, which in a lot of aspects I am, but there's still a lot of times where I think about my future, my career, I'm like, what the am I gonna do like UGC is great it's paying the bills currently along with my part-time gig that I'm working with my friend Holly but I'm no spring chicken here and I understand that at one point UGC is not gonna work for me <laughs> I'm 43 I give this maybe a year two years max where I can still continue to create UGC but I feel like after a while I'm just gonna look too old to be doing this and brands are not gonna want to work with me brands are not gonna want to use me in their marketing campaigns because I'm going to start to look older Wrinkles are coming in, hair is thinning. That's just the reality of aging. And so yeah, I'm just really trying to capitalize on all this UGC work now, but I know that it could end at any minute now. I'm scared because I don't know how long this is gonna last. And I'm still having all those doubts of imposter syndrome about going out there to the workforce and finding a full-time job. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, I do hope that this part-time gig that I'm doing with my friend turns into a full-time job. That would be the ultimate dream and goal just because I'm very confident in what I'm doing with them. So hopefully that works out. In all honesty, I am terrified and it's a scary place to be in and I try not to go there, but at the same time, I should be going there because I should be thinking about my future. But I think in my mind, I'm like, this just happened this year. I just lost my job January. I just started to get on my feet, got all these opportunities that came. And so I'm sort of like running with that and making this work before I have to really think about the future. So maybe come 2025 is when I really have to start working on figure out if I even want to be in this creative career in terms of a full-time job. I'm bringing this up now because Don asked me the other day, you know, like he came home, I was playing video games and he's like, is this is all you do? I'm like, no, I'm just on a break, honestly. He doesn't understand that when you're working a job and you're at your computer all day, you're designing, you're doing content, like you need a break. I can't sit there for six, seven, eight hours straight and just do design work or content work. It's, you just need to get off the computer sometimes. So that's why I was playing video games. But he was like, what are you gonna do? Are you ever gonna get a regular job? And I was like, you know, maybe. Maybe I just get some regular blue collar job because, because I don't know. Like I really don't know what the future holds for me. And like I said, right now, I'm just trying to do the best I can with what I have now. And then maybe in 2025, I'll really start thinking about, okay, where is this going? What is the longevity of this? And what are my plans when it ends? Because it is gonna end at some point. So yeah. That's sort of why I was like, I've been lying to you because I don't know if I portray that everything is fine and great and, you know, does that make sense? Like, I'm not really lying, but I feel like I am because I don't really talk a lot about how scared I am of my future. Mmm. Cucumbers. Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. I wanted to get on camera real quick and do a little taste test because 
I got Starbucks this morning before my workout because Donnie's working out first in the garage and he wants to run on the treadmill. So I was like, okay, go ahead. I'll enjoy my Starbucks. I'll enjoy my coffee in the morning and then put in a quick workout. But this is the Alphabus Cold Brew and it has, I'm reading it right here. It has uh, two pumps. It's the grande, so it has two pumps, peppermint syrup, non-dairy matcha cream cold foam, and pink and green duo sugar toppings, which I don't know what that is, but let's give it a try. It looks a lot different than the picture. Let me show you the picture. Uh, that's how it should look up there. <laughs> I don't know, it's already mixed, but we'll give it a go. Ooh, it tastes like, it tastes like freaking, um, Girl Scout cookie thin mints. <laughs> Not bad, but I don't think I would order it again. I think I prefer, like I was thinking it would, be, it would be more matcha tasting and I usually get, if I'm craving matcha there, I'll get the matcha latte, but I'll add shots of espresso to it. Yeah, if you like thin mints, you'll like this, but it's good, but I wouldn't typically gravitate toward this flavor, so. Pass for me, maybe for you. Got my laptop here, I'm just gonna edit while I wait for my turn to work out. <laughs> okay, scratch that. Donnie was running on the treadmill in the garage and he said it kept tripping. I don't know why, but sometimes our treadmill will trip, but it hasn't tripped in like months. So I'm not sure why it started tripping, but he's gonna run outside. So we decided let's just go to the park. Let's bring Blue with us, bring the stroller and try to take her out for her first ride, see if she likes it. So let's go. Hey girl, it's gonna be Blue's first day at the park. Wow, look at you guys. Hey, Boo Boo, can we just go for a little walk? You ready for a little walk? A little stroll at the park? Alright, we're at uh, Blue's first walk over here. Donnie and Aiko are gonna go run. We decided to leave here at home because she was having GI issues yesterday and uh, she didn't want to eat breakfast, but she did eat dinner and then today she's starting to feel better already. Anyways, that's why she's home and we've got the two here. Donnie's all the way over there running with the birds. Look at Aiko, she's trying to get the birds. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's running after all the birds. All right guys, my friend Jets is here and one of the reasons he came down is because he's buying this off me, which is a little Easter egg, if you know, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'm selling it to him for a great price because I already have one. Jets. Yay! Yay! <laughs> We're doing wow. a, like a autumn fall theme. Nice, nice. So there's a lot of like cinnamon. We're doing persimmon. This is like a cinnamon, um, it's a cinnamon cheese. We got a Trader Joe's. And these are like cinnamon covered cashews. Mm. Pumpkin cranberries, crisps. Like you with a uh, Japanese vodka. Cheers. 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 Happy Cheers. Saturday. Happy Saturday. Happy fall. Happy random. You don't even taste the alcohol at all. No. Ooh, that's right? good. Delish. Let's go for a little, uh, some meat. And a little grape. Ooh. The hot honey is dripping. Whoa, look at that. Mm. I've never done mm. it. That was like the perfect little bite. They love new laundry. <laughs> I just put it down here so they could uh, hang out. It's just a blanket. How are you, sweetheart? Such a good girl, huh? You're such a good girl. Who's a good girl? Look at them. Look at them go. Let's get more laundry. Watch. They're going to love it. Let's do this guy. Watch. Girls, laundry? Laundry? You want laundry? Do you want laundry? Do you want laundry? Come on. These are their uh, pet blankets. That's why I'm okay putting it on the floor. <laughs> Look at them go. <laughs> what are you looking for? I'm looking for Narnia, guys. <laughs> All right, so like I said earlier in this video, I had a big brand sponsorship, so this is a little Easter egg. 
guess it's not really an Easter egg. Cat's out of the bag, but Gyps is buying this off me. <laughs> Brand new. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what camera. is this part? <laughs> so the cool thing about this is like, you turn this on, right? And see, so you have it there. If you, you can also just face it towards us like that. And then it has face tracking. So if I put this down here, it won't just follow me. Oh shit. So, you know, if you're showing your artwork, your installations. Yeah. It'll just follow you. And if you wanted to do vertical, you can just go like this, continue, double tap your face. Now it's vertical, it'll shoot vertical. But the cool thing too is because it's on a gimbal, so if you know, wanna do really cool push in, pull outs. It's so smooth. It's smooth. To like do mm -hmm, your interior mm -hmm. design work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has slow mo. Like so. get the details. Yeah. But the cool thing about the creator combo is you have a mic, so. This thing? Yeah, so if you turn this on. So this is this one comes with a creative with a creative combo. combo, yeah. This okay. alone is like because I needed a mic. Or yeah. something. So this is on right. Testing one two. See how you see that bar right there? Where? That green bar uh -huh. is the audio. Alright, so in the last vlog, was it the last vlog? I can't remember, but I told you guys I was doing a collaboration or UGC with a brand called R8. And my niece is gonna do this for me. But it turned out that like 80% of the work was still me uh, and she was just kind of like a, a model for me. And so I tried this on and I really loved it. And I was like, can I keep it? She's like, yeah. So she got the tennis bracelet, which was like really pretty on her. I decided to keep this because I feel like it's cute. I'm not really a pearl necklace kind of guy, but it looked cute with this shirt when I tried it on, so. Right, right, am I right? Am I right, guys? Am I right? That's pretty cute, huh? So casually keep diving into concrete So bittersweet huh. Keep losing sleep while driving Just wanted to pop on real quick to end the vlog, but also to say that I am going to be giving away the Insta360 GO 3 in this video. If you guys are new here, I've talked about giving this away in a couple of vlogs. My original plan was to give this away in a YouTube live, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, I'm kind of nervous to go live and like public speaking is one of my worst nightmares and I feel like that's similar to that. Just, I don't know, that's just where my mind is. But more so, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, how would I even give this away during a live? Like I was teetering with some ideas, but ultimately I felt like that was just a little bit too complicated and it prevented me from giving this away. So instead of all these delays, you know what? Let's just go ahead and finally give this away because by the time I go live, there's gonna be a, <laughs> a go for, so. This guy is going to a lucky subscriber of mine. It is the Go3, not the Go3S, because I got the Go3S for a video. And so instead of selling this, I decided to give it away as a thank you to all my subscribers who have been with me for so long and to all my new subscribers who are here as well. Just a small way for me to give back to the channel since you guys always are supporting me, liking and commenting. In terms of the rules, it's pretty straightforward. There's only two rules and one is you have to have an Instagram because that's the only way I'm gonna be contacting the winner. So I'll flash my Instagram profile right here, but it is at Mikey.Rogers. Again, that is the only way I will be contacting the winner. The second rule is just to like and comment on this video. Doesn't matter what you say as long as you leave your handle, your Instagram handle, that way I can contact you. And I'm just gonna pick the winner randomly through a random generator, random comment picker, and I will pin that comment below. I'll let you know you've won and then I'll contact you via DM on Instagram. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Good luck everyone. Also, before I end the video, I do really love this lens. It's actually pretty cool. It's very versatile and it's small and it's perfect for vlogging. I think though for my talking head videos, I'll stick to the 11 millimeter f1.8 just because you get a little bit more separation. But I think for my like everyday vlogging and going out, this is so useful to have like a little zoom to punch into things instead of doing it in post. I don't know, I feel like that's pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think about this lens, if you even saw a difference in <laughs> my vlogs. Probably not because at 10, it's pretty much exactly the same as the 11 millimeter lens, but it's so cute. It's so small and it's so versatile. 
like such a good lens so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep it but yeah anyways as always thank you guys so much for watching and if you can try to choose happy over sad today and we'll catch you in the next one I go see ya in the next one bye <laughs>